I'm on the phone with Jeremy Gerard, Director of Web Development for the Providence, Rhode Island-based Envision Technology. Jeremy also teaches website design at the University of Rhode Island and is a frequent blogger at pumpkin-king.com, where he writes about all things web. Jeremy, good afternoon, your time, and thanks for agreeing to the interview. Thanks for having me, Bill. You bet. You cover a lot of topics web-related, as I mentioned, and uh, you're a frequent uh, speaker at a variety of conferences, and I have a few questions for you. Okay. Look into the crystal ball for web professionals on trends. What are you seeing or hearing? Looking forward to the future, I think that, you know, obviously multi-device support, you know, uh, making sure that our websites are working well and, you know, are and just, you know, more and more important as we go forward. You know, it's something that I think a lot of us are doing today. And really, in 2013, I saw, you know, big leaps. But still today, I see, you know, companies launch new websites, put out press releases, and you go to the site, and it surprises me that there's no multi-device or mobile support. So, you know, I think that that's going to continue to uh, to evolve and, and, you know, be more and more important. Yeah, this is real. And, uh, I mean, after all, it's 2014, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Hey, listen, you covered, recently wrote a piece on um, recommendations for web professionals I thought was rather interesting. Uh, do you recall that article? And if so, could you summarize what were some of the key walkaways? Yeah, that was an article that I did for uh, Smashing Magazine. And, you know, what I wanted to do was just, you know, really think about what those new to the industry, what, what things, what, what tips I would have for them, you know, and I think a lot about that because I read a lot of the web design blogs and a lot of the articles I think are geared towards not really those, you know, right fresh into the industry beginners. They're geared towards intermediate uh, or they're geared towards really advanced, you know, designers and developers. In addition to what I do here at Envision, you know, my teaching at the University of Rhode Island, I get to deal with a lot of really fresh students to the industry. And these are some of the things that I try to talk to them about when they're taking on their first position, you know, some of the things they should look, be looking to do. And it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, common sense stuff, but it never fails to amaze me how those common sense lessons are the ones that we seem to forget. We focus so much on making sure that, you know, we're writing clean HTML and, you know, compliant CSS and all these things that we forget some of the basics like, you know, enjoying your job, keeping a positive attitude, um, respecting your clients. You know, one of the things that I'm really, really big on is, you know, customer service. I think that our industry as a whole in many ways has been commoditized. You know, people can go out and they can buy a website for little to nothing, you know, through some point and click type tool. You know, why are they going to keep coming to us as web professionals and, you know, the expertise we provide? And, you know, part of that is our customer service. You know, the CEO for Envision here often says, you know, we're not in IT. We're in, you know, we're in human services. And that's something that I try to tell those new to the industry that, you know, respecting the client, keeping a positive attitude, you know, and, and staying hungry and, you know, keeping that learning going is going to serve you well as you grow as a web professional. Yeah, all well said. Uh, in fact, you also touch on embracing the company's culture, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, that's important. But get, drill into that. Why? What, what do you think that? What does that mean exactly? And why is that important to you? Well, you know, I'm really lucky. I work for a company that has a really fun, unique culture. Um, the people here. You walk through our office, and you're kind of constantly hear someone laughing. You're going to hear people having a good time, um, and it's nice to be a part of something where. We're passionate about what we do. We do great work, but we have fun while we're doing it. And a lot of times I see new professionals, whether it's in web or IT or really any industry that it applies to, where they join a company and it's just a job, you know, and there's so much about that company culture in terms of, you know, the fun that the organization has in terms of the things they do maybe outside of the office. You know, there's a lot of companies that do charitable work, you know, and getting involved in that and doing doing more than just what you do from nine to five, embracing, you know, what the company is trying to do as a whole and the culture of that company is something that I think is really important because, you know, you spend so much time at work, you might as well enjoy what you're doing and enjoy where you're doing it. And I, I think that embracing the culture of where you work is a big part of that. 
Yeah, also well said. You know, and you also brought up the the uh, the point that really resonates with me, and that is ask questions, right? Absolutely. Yeah, let's drill into that a little bit. Why why is that important? You know, when a new employee comes in, one of the things that is always a challenge as a manager is being able to give them what we call tribal knowledge. So through the years, we've come up with certain solutions. We've learned certain ways of doing things. But when a new employee starts, it's it's impossible to give them all that information. The only way they're going to acquire that tribal knowledge is through experience and through asking questions. So a lot of times, you know, what you see is if they encounter a challenge, you want them to try to figure it out for themselves. You don't want them to just throw their hands in the air and call May Day every time they encounter a roadblock. But you also don't want them spinning their wheels for hours and hours when a simple question to somebody may help them get unstuck, you know. And we try to have, you know, mentoring where we're repeatedly sitting down with new, you know, new team members to answer questions, to review what they're doing. But I think it's also important that you have to, you know, let those new web professionals know that you're not, they're not bothering you when they knock on your door or come over to your area and say, hey, do you got a few minutes for me? You've got to have that open policy and make them feel like, you know, it's, you're happy to answer their questions. That's part of what you expect um, because that's how they're going to grow. That's how they're going to get that knowledge and go from that, you know, new web professional to someone that's going to be more seasoned and able to really produce you know, great quality work. That's rock solid, uh, Jeremy, for sure. Well, listen, you certainly wear the web professional hat very well. Kudos uh, to you for your level of professionalism and the things that you do uh, to share your knowledge with others. Definitely for your expertise in this web professional space and for your time today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.